Hi, welcome to another episode of the Manufacturers Make Stride podcast. I'm your host, Martin Griffiths, and today I'm interviewing Jez Williman. Jez is the Deep Fly Group's CEO and founder from 2017 until present, and they're a UK-based micro-mobility company, and they've launched a new form of urban electric transport for city dwellers, adventure seekers, and safe path travellers. Um, so Jez has got lots of experience, he's got 27 years in manufacturing and, he, and he's used that to, to build this, uh, this company. So we dig into that into the last in this video, let's jump straight into it now. Jez, how are you doing? Morning, morning Martin, great to, uh, to be with you this morning. Yeah, likewise, yeah, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Um, so one of the first things that we came across when reading about what you're up to at the moment is that you're involved in making hyperscooters. Um, really intrigued, what is a hyperscooter? So interestingly, a hyperscooter uh, came about, you know, it, it, it sounds as though often with it, with these sort of brand names, it sounds as though there was some um, uh, you know, in, in intense marketing research that, 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 that went <laughs> on. And, it, and in reality, um, I was talking to a PR agency who wanted me to explain what the difference was between my product and, and every, everything else that would, would, was out there. Um, and I gave them this very long list and, and they also said, wow, so it's just about everything. It's kind of a hyper scooter. And then, you know, that came from a junior member of, of their team sort of sat at the back of this office. And I said, that's a, a good idea. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's okay. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> and yeah. that's how, how hyper scooter came, came around. And I think um, in, in the first instance, um, it wasn't about being, um, you know, people think about hyper as relates to hyper cars and, and think about super fast speed and, and, and so on. And it, and it wasn't necessarily that. Um, but when I looked at the, um, at the industry and it was at the time, it was a very fledgling industry. And the only reason I was looking at it was because I was, uh, I had an injury and, and I needed to get around the city um, and the, the amount of distance I could walk wasn't very far. And I started off with push scooters and I progressed to electric scooters that were available at that time. And they were all, in my opinion, dreadful um, and not very safe, not very practical, not much fun. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at um, electric skateboards, which were a better quality, but again, had, had obviously the, the, the danger issues. And I thought with 37 years in manufacturing, um, I can do better than this. Um, and then I started to, to, to sketch what um, has now become uh, Dragonfly Hyperscooter uh, would look like um, and the features that I wanted based on my experience of using everything else that was out there. So the Hyperscooter brand itself um, is, is really one that's uh, describing its, its many features rather than just being talking about um, uh, speed. Got you. Okay, so... What is the vision then on how scooters, um, I think you also talk, term it as micro mobility. What's the vision of how that can transform the way people transport around, around cities then? Look, I, I, I think generally, you know, the, 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 the world has reached a point where it said, we've got to do something, you know, this is, this is a problem. You know, if, 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 mm. if we, you know, the, the global warming targets are sort of, you know, plus one and a half degrees, um, you know, when we get much above that, um, it's almost, you know, annihilation of human beings. You know, we, I think once we yeah. get to something like three degrees, um, we can only support something like a, a billion people on the planet and to get to five, you know, it's, it's uninhabitable. So, um, I think the world um, has said, wow, need to make some fairly drastic um, changes. Um, and obviously, you know, electric power has then been been reborn because it was it was around, um, you know, sort of predates um, the, la the last century. Um, but it's not the end of the it's not the end of the world. It's not the sole answer. You know, if we if we replace every fossil fuel car with an electric vehicle um that doesn't suddenly mean oh we've now got zero congestion um mm. we've still got air pollution you know tires and brakes and so on that that is still going into the into the air 
Um, so cities suddenly don't become these uh, metropolises of, of, of green and wonderful um, uh, um, things. We need, we need to do better than that. Um, you know, if you look at the trajectory of, um, of, of, of car ownership and, and um, you know, the numbers of cars uh, that, are, that, are, that are being pumped out, I mean, we just run out of space for them. There just isn't yeah. enough space. Um, now, we've, we've got things like autonomy and, and, and so on, and perhaps we'll be ordering cars um, on our apps and, and, and they'll come and pick us up and they'll move us from A to B. Perhaps we'll be, you know, ordering, um, you know, hovercopters and, and, and we, you know, we'll, we'll come and pick us up and take us around, around the city. But we all know that's not tomorrow, you know, so we've got to yeah. get through the, the, next, the next period. Now, micromobility, you know, look, it gets a bad rap. Um, in, in, in many respects, because, um, you know, there, there have been some terrible accidents on, on two wheeled scooters um, and, um, you know, people have been, been, been injured, people have done some silly things. Um, and, but, but that's the reality of all things. There, there, are, there are daft drivers mm -hmm. every day. We don't have to, sure. we don't have to go anywhere and, and, and any distance and see a driver doing something that was, you know, m maddingly, um, in, you know, um, dangerous or, or, you know, potentially uh, life threatening. So that's true of everything, not just micro, micro mobility. But, um, you know, these small, single person vehicles, you know, potentially um, two person, three person vehicles, all in that sort of below 500 kilo sector termed micro mobility uh, are part of the answer. And I'm not here to say they're all the answer, but um, one of the reasons I designed Dragonfly was, you know, if you're going to, um, to have a short journey um, and you've got an option of sitting in the car at seven miles an hour on average speed for that journey. So it's going to take you 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour potentially to go a very sh short space of time. Or um, you could jump, jump on a dragonfly um, and have fun, be safe um, and, and arrive at your destination with a big smile on your face. Um, that's got to be a, a, a better way, way forward. Um, and yeah, I know you haven't got that protective cocoon of your car um, and it's not warm and you haven't got your heated seat, um, but you know, you, uh, you actually got some fresh air, you engage your core um, and, and you had fun because again, for me, um, in the early products and particularly these, the, these two wheel scooters that we, that we see the majority of, um, actually they're, they're a bit boring to ride um, for me. You know, I, I've come from a sort of, uh, done a lot of adrenaline sports in my, in my, in my um, mm -hmm. years. And um, when I wanted something that was more akin to snowboarding or kite surfing or, you know, something that was actually a lot, a lot of fun um, yeah. while you were riding it as well as being practical. So um, I think micro mobility has a, has a role to play. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I hope people are more accepting of it, you know, whether that be um, electric bikes, um, electric mm -hmm. scooters and, and all the other, um, you know, electric vehicles uh, to get us around cities that, that hopefully will reduce congestion. Yeah. Do you think it's slightly like culture specific or maybe like geography specific? Because I'm just thinking about, you know, some maybe visits to some countries in Asia that I've been in the past and they'll just be, you know, the, the ratio of cars to say, uh, you know, motorbikes or scooters there and where you may see, you know, a family kind of on a, on a, on a scooter or a motorbike there. Um, yeah. Do you think were it's, do you think there's kind of different geographical areas where it's more kind of accepted or more open to to try those ideas? Look, I, I, I think you know, obviously the UK we, we're a bit behind the eight ball anyway. We've got the we've mm. got the trials that have been going on on the two two wheel scooters. Um, you know, everywhere else, if you travelled around Europe, you would see tens of thousands of them. Um, mm. Look, I'm I'm not a particular advocate of leaving them in the streets and and and, and so on. That's why we've adop adopted a more uh, of an ownership model um, in, um, in 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 that way. Um, so the Brits are definitely um, uh, behind the eight the eight ball compared to lots of other geographies. Obviously, Asia um, is 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 way ahead because again they've they've got demographics, particularly in cities. 
um, where they've got you know lots and lots of people that they may need to move around. They have whole yeah. lanes. Um, I, I never forget the first time I went to the the Beijing um, Olympics, um, and um, it was, I was traveling around the city, you know, in a taxi. It was it was a disaster. You sit in traffic forever. Um, so we went to a um, um, a, um, a you know local uh, department store, uh, and we bought a couple of mountain bikes that cost you know. 30 pounds I mean they were unbelievably inexpensive and we got around the city to all the different stadiums um on on uh, on bikes and there were whole lanes allocated and it was just an incredible experience to be next to um all these thousands of people that had got uh, un unbelievable contraptions that they'd pulled together um and sort of built at home um, to, uh, to to get around, and as you say, some some would have you know going through Be Beijing and you know, a city like Be Beijing, and they've got, you know they're pulling chickens and and and, and they've got the, mm -hmm. the, the the dog and the daughter and and and, and so on. And, but uh, um, all part of that rich cult cultural uh, experience when you uh, when you travel. But uh, and it's the same as you know is 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 true um, in lots of different locations. Space is 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 clearly um, a key factor. Um, you know, in London, we've got challenges because we've got, you know, relatively narrow streets. Um, and, you know, we really do need um, either segregation um, or uh, we've got to have some, some way to limit the speed of cars. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually super pleased in London, they've, they've introduced this uh, 20 mile per, per hour limit um, you know, Paris is doing the 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 the, the, the same, and many other cities are, are doing the same. But it's it's that enforcement. Unfortunately, you can uh, be in the city, and you'll still see someone driving in a twenty limit. Um, at um, you know, they're driving their their incredibly powerful um, car at you know fifty sixty miles an hour, and if they do um, um, hit a cyclist, pedestrian, or um, sc scooter rider, you know, that's going to uh, guess what? You know, they're they're going to come off come off worse um but i think you know look and i think society has changed you know we're we're often all of us with a um you know we have our smartphones and you, you you again you walk down the street any and almost any village and there'll be somebody walking along the uh the pavement um probably in a conversation could even be on you know talking to somebody live on on their uh facetime um and less aware of yeah. the potential dangers of then just stepping in, in into the road so i think you know society um has has, has, has changed and we need to adapt to, to the way we we uh, we are and i think during covid look we've seen um in, in um in, in london how many um restaurants adapted by putting out outside facilities putting trees in yeah. the um um, on the on the pavements and how many people have really enjoyed that um it was it was it was normally the the sort of continental um uh, experience but that was brought to, to london during covid and, and i hope it stays yeah yeah so what would you say were some of the biggest challenges in designing and manufacturing that the, the scooter and you know have you overcome that and where are you at now with it so um the the the, the challenges are, are um, are many <laughs> when, when, when you start from scratch um that they're, they're always challenging. particularly you know what we did was 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 i i wanted to bring basically a, a a track car principle um into a small single person um stand up vehicle so we you know with things like um you know traction control and and ackerman steering geometry and um an all around sprung independent to uh, damp suspension uh, but the, but I wanted to bring a, a steering system that's never been done before, um, which was to me much more fun, and it, and it was akin to what I'd learned um, kite surfing. So um, it was this ability to roll steer and twist steer. So if you think about a car, all we do is turn turn a steering wheel with a with a uh, conventional two wheel scooter. We've got this small t-bar and, and we just move it left or right the same with it the same with a bicycle um and i wanted to do something that was more fun than that and uh more more engaging so we designed a um uh, a steering system that uses your steer or tilt steer however you want to describe it um as well as twist steer so you've got those 
those systems working together um, and combined with an Ackerman steering geometry gives you incredibly tight, tight turning. But because you've got, uh, with our product, three or four wheels, you've got an incredibly stable, low platform. Um, so it's not only fun, but it's, it, but it's very, very safe as, as, uh, as, as well. Um, and then we wanted to bring in um, a lot of the sort of standard automotive features in terms of lighting and turn signals mm. and horns and um, um, on, on board um, sound system for, for your um, directions and, um, and even to play your music if you want to. Um, all in a visual package that, that looked great when it was at home because I, I, that was the other part of it for me was that when it was parked in your living room, um, it was anything like my wife. If I put my bicycle in the living room, um, it was, it was what, what are you doing with that? And that's, well, um, yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's not happening. You know? so, yeah. so I wanted something that actually I could, I could get away with leaning up against the wall um, and it actually looked like some kind of, you know, uh, very uh, enhanced um, Bang & Olufsen sort of speaker system mm -hmm. that, was, that was leaning against the wall or some sort of uh, modern art sculpture, as it were, sort of technology art sculpture mm -hmm. rather than uh, uh, mo mode, of, mode of transport. Uh, amazing. That sounds brilliant. So how long has it taken you to get that from the first design then through to through out to market? So you know what it, it, it's it's actually taking us just over three and a half years um yes. you know again we, we it, it's not n nothing you know it it, mm. it, it is um uh, you know, some of the engineers that have, that have worked on said and, and for me also undoubtedly the most difficult project they've ever, ever worked on um which is it, it's 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 miniaturizing anything isn't it you know you if, if we've got more space mm. more size more more you know if we just needed to to make another car you know we could have built another car chassis or even electric car chassis and no, no problem but we were taking all of that and miniaturizing it and trying to make it as light as possible which is which brings um challenges and equally my initial approach to manufacturing having been in manufacturing for 37 years was to focus on the uh the marketing and the sales and the, and the distribution side uh, and bring in a um, have, a, have a manufacturing partner um, and, and if I'm completely honest that's not been successful um, or not been as, as successful as I would have liked it to have been um, again you know Covid is a part of that um, yeah. you know that the, not having the factory there present um, you know being able to get together get your hands on the nuts and bolts doing everything mm -hmm. over Zoom as we've had to um, mm -hmm. during, during COVID. That's been very challenging, um, without doubt. Um, but again, it's, it's, I think one of the challenges is, 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 is getting the, you know, it's very prominent in, 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 in the press right now. They're sort of, you know, they, they, they were even, I think the PM was, 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 was talking about, um, you know, the fact that manufacturers have, you know, fallen in love with, with, with low cost centers of, um of um of labor and we don't invest in in technology and, and and so on you know we couldn't make a product of ours and suddenly come up with probably 10 to 20 million pounds worth of robotics to be able to assemble it that just wouldn't happen um we, we, we'd have to amortize that that would have to go into the price of the product and ultimately the 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 um the consumer has got conditioned to expect a, um, a high level of product and a high level of product design and performance for a low price. Um, and, and how do you achieve that? You know, without moving the consumer on and say, look guys, if you want this, it's gonna cost more. Now, when you have a, an established band um, like a, you know, a, a Bentley or a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini, a high end brand, um, it, you know, even you look at the, you know, couture, uh, um, clothing industries um, people expect to pay a premium but when you come outside of that and and you you, you sort of mainstream consumer products um, people expect quite a bit for for, for not a lot um, mm -hmm. and 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 that then can can prove challenging and we're trying to achieve a um, a change in habit you know get getting the world to um, accept a, a, a different way to get around um, and using high-end materials, um, high-end technology, uh, high-end mechanical engineering, but at a price that is still 
um, a, a, affordable to the most because you don't want to be elitist. You don't want to say, well, yeah, sure. only these people can afford it. No, I'd like everybody to be able to make that choice. Um, mm. and, it, and that's challenging. That is challenging. Yeah. Um, it's great that you've, that you've got this far. So what's going up in the next 12 months? So what we've done is um, having learned all the things that we learned um, during the development, one of the things that we've, we also realized in listening to the marketplace um, is the ability to, um, to change the product, um, to be able to change wheels, change tires, um, upgrade, okay. uh, modify, you know, th those things um, are um, very much talked about in the industry. A lot of people have bought, you know, low end products from, from, from China, found they've got a problem then there's no way to, to, to service it, you know, how they, they can't nice. send it back to China and, and, and so on. So we wanted a product um, that, um, you know, almost one man, no tools, no experience type thing could, mm. could, 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 could achieve. Um, so that perhaps, um, you know, my philosophy was if you were going, you know, off road at the weekend or you were going in the woods or you're going to the beach or you were doing something that was, um, you know, perhaps a little bit more all terrain, should we say, that you could easily switch out the deck, switch out the wheels and go from, you know, seven inches to 10 inch or all terrain uh, uh, wheels. You could sit, switch out the power source. So the wheels that have got the motors in, instead of them being, you know, 250 watt or 350 watt, you could put a thousand watt motors on there. And, and you know, you're going around your um, um your your farm or your uh, or you're, you're going um fishing or hunting or where you know you're going off, off, off road and you need a bit more power or you're pulling something that uh needs a bit more um, power. so those those options are going to be there um we're also planning next year to introduce um a uh, a bicycle with the same um battery so you can buy um you know both products but you own you, you can switch the battery if you're in riding one at once why why have two batteries so we we're trying to be you know sort of uh uh frugal with the number of cells that 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 that, that are required to to um uh, to use the product so you can switch um and that brings then the overall cost um of the product if you know people like love, love bikes i love bikes um sometimes i might want to go on my dragonfly sometimes i might want to go on a bicycle and if i'm if i want an electric bicycle i can then just flick out the 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 battery from one and put it into the in, into the other um creating a new bicycle that sits within the the uh, the d fly mantra um is 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 proving to be a challenge even though i've 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 you know I've, i have many many friends in the in the pro peloton um doing something new in cycling um mm. is uh, is is a challenge but but we, we we will bring a product out um to market next year um and we've also got um later this year uh, we've actually got an electric moped um launching called firefly um which will be uh initially it's going to be a four kilowatt motor um a two-person uh, moped um, it, it's 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 relatively modest speeds up to 50 kilometers an hour but again for cities um, that should be more than more than adequate uh, it's got a hundred kilometer range so it's got a good range um, and it's got 45 liters of, of onboard storage so it, you've got up to 180 kilos of of of, um, of weight to support Again, um, obviously all, all around suspension, um, etc. Et um, and we're trying to keep the, 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 the price of that at a very, very affordable um, um, price for, uh, for everyone. Um, so, um, so that's uh, quite exciting. We're quite excited about that. So we we're going to become, you know, by next year, um, we will um, have sort of at least, at least three different vehicles um in the in the range and obviously the dragonfly will will morph into um all sorts of of of, of different vehicles for, for different applications depending on uh uh the terrain and what and what you're doing
Yeah, um, great. That sounds excellent. Uh, like it's interesting. Like you've got like kind of a clear vision of what you see uh, people going out there and doing with the you know the dragonflies. Do you have any um, like what's the most fun thing, or do you have any kind of cool examples of what people have actually taken it and you know done it, uh, used it with in the you know when it's gone out there to to people? I think I think the thing um, that we that we see the most is. Um, because it's so different um, and it, it's you get people to ride it and once they've got it and it's in it's it's one of those things that it takes I think about six seconds to learn um, oh okay it, it, oh, okay it steers like that oh right you know and then once they've got it it's it, you can't unlearn it you know you you have okay. it and then mm -hmm. what happens is um you, you uh you know people just do more and more with it you know we had a guy in boston uh sent me sent me a video yesterday and and uh um you know he literally had it for within five minutes um and uh, and he had his son he was trying his son was trying to video him um on his uh two-wheel scooter it was a very high-end uh two-wheel scooter i have to say mm -hmm. um and he just he couldn't he, he couldn't keep up with him but only because he was doing turns and he was going round and the, and the car doesn't have that steering geometry when the four wheel steering to be able to uh, to do it. And, and you could see this guy was laughing and, and having so much fun by by playing with this product, which is very different. You know, if you, if you think about ATVs, um, you, you know, you have a, a, a small handlebar and you, and, and you move it, but you have to sort of push your weight out left yeah. and right um, yeah. to be able to counterbalance what's happening. And, and, and as is, 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 is different to that. So um, I think people are having a lot of fun. We had a German guy um, who, um, he, 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 to be fair, he was a, uh, he did enjoy riding uh, off-road motorbikes um, and no one in the team had managed to do this before, but he'd been on the product for literally 15 seconds um, mm. and was doing donuts with it. Um, and we thought, we also looked at each other and thought, I didn't think that was possible, but um, <laughs> that's very cool that it is possible. Um, and, 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 and again, you know, beaming smile, ear, ear, ear to ear. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so, so people are, you know, are, are having fun and, and, but, you know, they're, you know, a lot safer, you know, they're, they're, they're seen, they're yeah. safe, they're, they're um, you know, and, and, and you can do things that you can't do um, on, 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 on a two wheel scooter. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks a lot. Um, that was really fascinating. Thank you uh, for that. Um, what What's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they want to find out more about D-Fly or the Dragonfly or what you guys have got coming up? So um, in invariably, uh, these, these days, it's always uh, in Instagram um, or I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, they can e email me. I'm sure we can put an um, e email in the, in, the, in the bio. No problem. Um, Jez at D-Fly Group. Um, dot com um, they can they can get in touch with the um, info on the on the website um, and um, you know just 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 follow us um, obviously on uh, on on the various platforms um, and uh, love to love to hear from anybody um, any any questions uh, any insight site any ideas uh, always always welcome okay we will do well thanks for your time James great to speak to you today Thanks a lot. Thank you, Martin. Lovely to uh, to see you and your audience. Cheers.